grace to you and peace from God our Father, Christ Jesus, his Son, our Lord, who is the only resurrection and the life. Amen. Well, happy Abba's Day, all you guys. Abba? It's what they call a reduplication. I don't know. That sounds redundant all by itself. Reduplicate. Anyway. It's when a word is flipped back on itself, and the word Av, which means father, is made into an endearment. Into Papa, Daddy. It's what we can cry out for someone who is closer than just saying, Oh, Father! You know, you can cling to his leg like a little child and say, Daddy. Because that child has no fear of Daddy's pant leg. Towering up above, Oh, Lord, you are so very, very big. You know how that goes. We're really impressed down here, let me tell you that. But then let's look at what that means to have him as our Father. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. We have mortal bodies, and yet through the Spirit Christ was raised up and so also we, having been baptized into the name and into the blood of Christ Jesus, we too shall be raised to new life. And we're able to cry out, Abba, Father. We will be rid of this old flesh and receive new bodies perfected in every way that makes us to be just like Christ. And we know that we have been adopted through that very blood to become the family of God. And if we are in a proper family, then what's the relationship? God the Father is to all creation. Jesus Christ is to the whole church in heaven and earth, as the Father is to his own household. This doesn't mean that you're God. It means you need to understand the role of what God does. He loves unconditionally. No matter how much of a brat his son or daughter might become, there is always a hug and forgiveness at the end of it. Always. As long as we come to what? The understanding that Father knows best. Don't you love those old shows from the 50s? That's a nice title. Father always knows best. And when you're a little child, four or five or six years old, one would presume that Father does know what's best. And there goes that. And is working properly with Mother. And together, they're wearing what? Raising up the children to have proper respect, which they mean fear, not terror, but mean proper respect for God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, because you don't want to get them angry. Remember that line? Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Yeah. So God gets great big and it doesn't say he turns green, but it does say in the scripture, his nose flames with a flame of fire. I mean, that's just the way they have written it in the Old Testament. When it says you're angry, your nose becomes red with a flame of fire. How incredibly, well, never mind. Just, you don't want to see him when he's like that. Because then he's helping death and destruction to the world which has it coming. And if we, apart from Christ, would have it coming also. Because why? What do we deserve for our behavior? Death, damnation. But what have we been given for the sake of Christ? Life, life to the fullest, eternal life with him in paradise. And that we are now more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
And we know that there is nothing, life or death, angels or demons, things that are present or things that are yet to come, any power, any dominion, any, any force in the universe, or height or depth, or anything else in all creation that could possibly separate us from that love of the Father. So love is guarding, guiding, and protecting. A true father will sacrifice himself before anyone will come. He'll let any harm come to anyone in his family, his children, his spouse. Maybe even the children he doesn't like so much. That happens, you know. Things like that happen in life. I've known some. Parents wanted to get rid of them, but they didn't know what to do. So they just endured and loved. Praying that one day some common sense would come into that child. You know anyone like that? Were you ever like that? I don't think so, because you're here now. So at least common sense did come into you, didn't it? You have the fear and love of God as God has intended from the very beginning. And look at what he did. He gave his only begotten. Now God could have created as many children as he wanted, as he did with Adam, because Adam is counted in the genealogy of, in, in Luke as being the son of God. But it's not the same thing. He was a made being. But the Son, the true Son, Christ Jesus, begotten from the love of the Father from before all eternity, if you can use such a phrase at all, always has been, always will be, begotten, not made. He gave up this one in order to win creatures like you and me. And this is love. And how do we respond? Do we usually respond as well as we should? Maybe not. But what do we owe to God the Father? And accordingly, to our earthly fathers. We need to love Him, honor Him, respect Him, listen to what He has to say, because He's got wisdom above and beyond anything of which we can possibly conceive. And stay away from everything that he says to stay away from. Bad grammar, but you get the point. Do not go to that place. It's an evil city, and I'm planning to blow it up anyway. You know, talking about Sodom, Gomorrah, Reno, Las Vegas, Atlantic City, Manhattan, Los Angeles, most of Chicago. <laughs> It's going in the end, isn't it? All of it? I don't know if he's going to target certain places first, but it's all going because why? Is anything on this earth the way God intended it to be? There is still beauty in the world. You can see that. There are flowers up there. The weather's weird, but the flowers are beautiful. The grass is beautiful. The park is really lovely. It's off uh, whichever direction it is, that way. It's really nice. God knows what he's doing. He just wants us to stay out of the way and not get in his way when he's doing what he does. And that's how it is in our lives too. We don't interpose our own feelings, our thoughts, emotions into saying, no, you're wrong. Because when he has said something is right or wrong, he is always right or wrong about well, he's always right about the things that are wrong, too. It's just one of those things. We cannot argue any more than a six-year-old can argue with a 40-year-old dad. It just doesn't work. But, Dad, I saw you have plenty of money in your wallet. Uh, that doesn't count. That belongs to your mother. Or whatever. So... There's always something going on in this world that we don't, that goes beyond, above and beyond our understanding. So we simply accept what the Father has said. 
Now, not all earthly fathers are as good as others. Some are scoundrels. Some are abusive. But you here, have you tried your hardest, have you worked your hardest to raise your children up to love the Lord God and to obey authority as he was appointed on this earth? I think you have. Have you raised your children up to love other people more than themselves? I hope so. Because if you love yourself too much, you know, you would, that's like, you know, you just end up with a big problem. You don't have room for anyone else to love you. In particular, you don't have room for Jesus to love you. Loving yourself is making yourself God if you love yourself too much. You have to have respect for who you are, respect for your own flesh, not to destroy it. But should you adore yourself and post every possible picture, this is my breakfast, this is why I am so thin, and you put it on Twitter, is this something that someone should be doing? This is my wardrobe. These are my new shoes. Who really cares? Somebody out there that was following me. Strange. But do you ever do that about the things that the Lord has done for you? You post pictures, this is the supper that God provided through my mom, and Lord help us, I'm going to eat it. You ever post that with those kind of words? No. How about this? This is the mac and cheese that I made for, for lunch, and thank God because I really love this stuff. Ever post that sort of thing? No. We don't thank God enough for the simple things in life, do we? <clears throat> Especially the fact that there's someone sitting by you in the pew who is your brother or your sister in the faith, family of God. And so he's continuing to work through us as we mature in this life, sanctification, making us more and more and more like Jesus as we grow older. But whatever position that we have in this life, it's because we are here for each other. And this we do through acts of loving kindness. And that means family works together, loves together, argue now and then, but always come to a peaceful resolution, never holding grudges, and always ending in what? Hugs. Most important way of saying, everything's good, I still love you. Is there anything else that we need to do in this life that is pleasing to God? Did he sell, tell us to keep every one of the 618 laws that are in the Old Testament? Yes, there are that many aside from the Ten Commandments. 618 laws. Did he tell us to keep every one of these meticulously? He did not. And Jesus, in fact, sometimes got to the point of almost mocking people who tried. Because what was the purpose of the law? Were we ever intended to be saved by the law? The law was there to show us how far we fell short of the glory of God and to show us how much we need forgiveness and assistance unless we wanted a great big beating for not learning our lessons properly. Do we need forgiveness, even for the th sins that we've done today? I did. I do. I swore at an inanimate object this morning. My alarm clock. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything about that, but nevertheless, some of it involved taking the Lord's name in vain. He needs forgiveness. Coming here from your homes, did you grumble about getting up early? Did you grumble about having to get someone else in your family up early? Did you grumble about having to make breakfast for the people who are still in bed? I'm up here down here making breakfast and they're still sleeping. Right, Mom? Yeah. 
and all these things is because it's an act of selfishness. Yeah, it sounds bad, but it is. Because when we are family, what do we do for each other? Help each other in every way. And look out and make sure that our lives are as peaceful and kind and relaxed in the gospel, knowing that we are not under condemnation, but living under the blanket of forgiveness and holy baptism and love. Because it is for this reason that Jesus came to us. To cast out those fears, those demons that haunt our hearts. To set us free to proclaim the glory of our Lord through our very lives. May the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding fill our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.